Hello there, how are you guys today? Thanks for joining, thanks for connecting. Hey, thanks for sharing. As you log in, go ahead, hit the like button, go ahead and subscribe to my YouTube channel for those of you that are watching on YouTube. For those of you that are watching on Facebook, go ahead and share this Facebook Live. Go ahead and like it because we're gonna have a good time today. Hi, Mishi, how are you? Thanks for joining. Hey, hon, uh, thanks for joining. Uh, go ahead and like this video and share it for me if you will. Today, we're gonna encourage you today about your midnight. As I begin to meditate and as I begin to just sit with the Lord, and as I just began to posture myself in the place of prayer, I just felt an overwhelming sense of worship. Where we are as it relates to the body of Christ and where we are in the world at large, there is nothing that pretty much anybody can do about where we are but wait and see. But what does that look like for your personal life? What does that look like for your ministry? What does that look like for your uh, marriage, your uh, mind, your promises that you're believing God for, that healing, that breakthrough, that uh, spouse being saved, delivered, set free, those children being saved, the provision of God? What does your posture look like in this hour that may be aiding to your breakthrough or that may be impeding your breakthrough. And we're going to talk about that today. So go ahead and share this, at, if you will, to your your timeline. Go ahead and share it to your platform. Invite somebody on. Listen, I want to encourage you. I want to decree and declare over you that this 30th day, or is it the 31st, 30th day of June, you are blessed. You are highly favored of the Lord. God has plans for you. He has a design on you. And his plan is to prosper you, not to harm you, to give you hope and a future. I want to encourage you, woman. I want to encourage you, man, to believe God in spite of what the situation looks like. So thank you for joining. I appreciate your time. My name is Prophetess Sherry Downs, and I appreciate you joining us today. We're usually on here Tuesdays and Fridays, um, should nothing impede our schedule. So thank you for joining. You are blessed. You are highly favored of the Lord. You are blessed in the city, blessed in the field, blessed when you come and when you go. Your hands are anointed. Your mind is anointed. You are anointed to shift atmospheres. You are anointed to create wealth. The God of all the universe, the God uh, of heaven's army, he dwells on the inside of you. His spirit dwells on the inside of you and he is jealous over you. He is longing for you. He desires to spend time with you. He desires that his plans cause you to prosper and not to do harm to you. His plan is to give you hope and a future. So I want to encourage you today. Go ahead and share this to your timeline as you come in. In. Welcome. Welcome to my Facebook Live. For you that are on Facebook, welcome to my YouTube channel. Listen, if you haven't gone and subscribed to my YouTube channel, go ahead and subscribe to that channel. We're going to be pushing out more and more content as we build this momentum and as we go forward. But today, I want to do another contest. And this time, you're going to win one of my books. So what you need to do to enter into this contest, last time we did lemon heads and this time we're going to do runs. Guess how many runs are in this jar and you win one of my books sent directly to you. Last time we did lunch on me. Today we're going to do a free book sent to your house. So what you need to do to enter into this contest is you need to share today's Facebook Live, 630. Share this Facebook Live. If you haven't already done so, go ahead and subscribe to my YouTube channel. If you've already subscribed to the YouTube channel, go ahead and share one of the YouTube videos. Go ahead and share one of the YouTube videos and how will I know that you have done this? Simply by tagging me in what you share. Go ahead and tag me in what you share. Guess how many runs are in this jar 
and the closest number, not over the number, but the closest number to the correct number will win one of my free books, free shipped to directly to your house. Don't be bullied by the devil. Take authority and fight back. If you have not purchased this book already and you would desire to purchase it, you can purchase it on Barnes & Noble, Amazon, Walmart, Target, anywhere books are sold, you can purchase Don't Be Bullied by the Devil. So listen, I want to encourage you today. I know where the world is, um, your situation, you may feel like it's hopeless. You may feel that you are in a prison. You may feel that your promise is far away from you. But my friend, my sister, my brother, I want to encourage you in the Lord. Type in the comments, I need encouragement. If you find yourself contending for the promise, contending for the breakthrough, contending for revelation, contending for your relationship, relationship with God. If you found yourself in a fight, if you found yourself in a faith fight, listen, I want to encourage you. So go ahead, share this so that somebody else can be encouraged. Share it to your timeline, share it to your friends and invite somebody on. We're going to talk about today, um, your midnight. What does that look like? Uh, for you. Um, keys to unprecedented praying power. Oftentimes we can get in a situation where it seems hopeless, where we seem like we're locked up, chained, and in between um, one situation and the promise fulfilling itself. But what posture do we need to take in those midnight situations when all hope is lost, when you're trying to see what God is going to do, when you're contending for the breakthrough, when you're in a place of warfare, when you're in a place of intercession, when you're a place believing God for the door to be open to the promise so that you can walk freely into the promise of the Lord. And oftentimes we get in a situation where our perspective must shift before the door opens. Did you hear that? We oftentimes get in a situation where nothing happens until our perspective shifts so that the door to our next, the door to our breakthrough, the door to our promise, the door to provision, the door to what's next will open. So God wants you to understand who he is in your times of, of, of warfare and in your times of contending, in your time of prayer, in your time of posturing yourself to believe what God has said. One of the keys that I'm finding is the key to unprecedented praying power is praise. I was sharing with my husband that when I was in prayer, um, these last couple of days or even this last week or so, I just didn't feel the sense to ask God for anything. I didn't feel the sense to put petitions before God and request before God and talk to God about situations. I just felt an overwhelming sense of worship, worship and speaking in my heavenly language because I believe there's much activity that's happening in the realm of the spirit. I believe God has heard your petition. God has heard your request. God has heard your cry. God has heard you and he is responsible responding to what you pray. But our position in prayer is everything. Our breakthrough manifests on our position in our perspective. You have to begin to shift your mind to the perspective of heaven. You have to see it the way God sees it. You have to recognize it the way God is saying that it is. You have to begin to pray and ask God to take the scales off of your eyes so that you can see what heaven is doing. And oftentimes when we get in a situation where we are feeling locked up, chained up, where we're feeling that there's no hope and that we are hopeless, God will step in when we shift our perspective to believing what he said. And I catch myself oftentimes in these moments where I have to begin to decree and declare a thing that it will will be established in the earth. One thing you have to know is what 
what God has to say about it. So let's get into it. Let's get started. We're going to dive into this teaching, but first we're going to pray and I'm going to pray for you. And uh, we're going to dive into um, your keys to unprecedented praying power, praise and worship. Father, we bless you. Father, we honor you. We adore you. We look unto you, the author and the finisher of our faith. Father, we exalt you right now. God, step in the midst of this time. Step in the midst of this uh, Facebook Live and begin to speak with us, Father. I pray, God, for my brothers and my sisters, Father, that they will be encouraged, that they will be inspired, that they would, you would ignite a fire in them for purpose, destiny, and for your plan. Father, I pray, God, that the spirit of counsel would come, that the spirit of the fear of the Lord, the spirit of wisdom and knowledge would come. I pray, Father, for the sevenfold spirit of God to manifest in this time. Father, I pray, God, that you would dwell with us, that you would uh, use my voice, Father, as an instrument and a tool to propagate your word. I pray, Father, that I will begin to rightly divide your word, that your people will be encouraged, inspired, and and enlighten according to your plan and your will and your design, and that they will be encouraged to pursue your purpose. In Jesus' name, amen. Listen, go ahead and share this video really quickly to your timeline. Don't forget, if you want to enter into our contest, we're giving this to, what did we say? Um, Friday. Friday? Uh, let's do Friday after... Um, no, we did Thursday. Thursday. Let's give this till Thursday. So we're going to um, share today's Facebook Live. If you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, go and subscribe. If you've already subscribed, share one of the YouTube videos and guess how many runs are in this uh, jar. And you win a free copy of my book directly sent to you. I'll ask for your mailing address and we'll ship this book directly to your doorstep. So listen, your keys to unprecedented pray power. Well, I begin to sit with the Lord and I, as I told you, I just felt an overwhelming sense of worship. I felt an overwhelming sense just of gratitude, of just blessing God for who he is and for the victories that he's already won in my life. I just began to sit with the Lord and not ask for anything. I'm not sure if that's happened to you where you've just sat with the Lord and there was nothing that you could ask for. You had poured everything out. You told him all of your woes. You told him all about every situation. But the only thing that was left to do was to worship him, exalt him, worship him for who he is and what he is doing and has done in your life. Shifting your perspective from that of slavery to sonship. Sons don't have to worry about provision from their father. Sons don't have to worry about being brought out of darkness by their father. Sons know they have an inheritance in God in that he will not allow any situation to overtake you with, where with all temptations he provides a way of escape that you may be able to bear it. So we're going to address how do you discern when midnight manifests in your life? How do you discern when midnight manifests in your life, when things are about to shift, when you're at the darkest point, but you're at the breaking of day? How do you discern that season or that time in your life where God is getting ready to turn things around, where God is getting ready to open up your understanding, where God is getting ready to manifest the promise, where the doorkeepers are getting ready to be revealed in your life. When is that moment for you? Uh, what does that moment look like? And how do you posture yourself to uh, praise and worship God in your midnight situation? In Acts, Acts 16, 16 through 40, about midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God and other prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly, 
there was such a violent earthquake that the foundations of the prison were shaking. At once, all the prison doors flew open and everyone's chains were loose. So what happened in this moment is Paul and Silas were thrown in jail because they uh, cast the devil out of a girl who had a spirit of divination who was following and following them. And Paul got irritated by this lady. Her revelation was correct in that Paul and Silas were, uh, that Paul was the man that was uh, preaching salvation and people could follow Paul for salvation, but she was out of order and she was in the wrong spirit. So Paul cast that devil out of the lady, the soothsayer, the seer, uh, the um, uh, psychic uh, gift and the people that were gaining wealth because of this lady's gifting that she was working for. They got angry at Paul and Silas because they, she, their discerning of what the enemy was using this lady for cast the devil out of her and she began uh, to walk in freedom and now she saw what they were doing and using her so now she's not operating in her gift so they're losing money so all these people rose up against Paul and Silas at a moment of warfare they end up in a prison because of it all of the people want to stone them they want to kill them they want to come against them so he they end up in a prison situation but the Bible says that while in in prison, while under attack, while in captivity, Paul and Silas begin to shift their perspective. Type in the comments, I need to shift the way I see things. Yes, Paul and Silas could have taken the posture of we're behind bars, our situation looks bleak, how did we get here? We were doing the work of the Lord, but they end up in a prison situation and I know many of us may feel like we're in prison. I know uh, many states are going back to the shut down, shut in, isolation uh, uh, posture because the COVID-19 is arising back again. Many people are experiencing anxiety, hopelessness. They're wanting their churches to reopen. They're wanting life to get back to normal. Some people seem overwhelmed that they're in a prison. They're, they're contending for breakthrough, contending for provision, contending for promises. But God is wanting you to shift your perspective in that your midnight wants to manifest itself and God wants you to have the breakthrough that he declared over you. God has spoken concerning you. He's spoken concerning your situation. He's spoken concerning your life. He decreed and declared to the children of Israel that I have plans for you and these plans are to prosper you, not to harm you, to give you hope, a future, and an expected end. It's God's will that you walk in prosperity. It's God's will that you walk in health. It's God's will that you live that life more abundantly until it overflows. God doesn't want you broke, busted, disgusted, sick, uh, uh, but living beneath your privileges. God's children, if our father has cattle on a thousand hills, if our father, because our father has cattle on a thousand hills, because our father has riches and glory, because our father holds the whole world in his hand, because our father is good, why would he not want you to experience the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. If I can go to my father and put my petition and my request before him, then I have to believe in who he is and position myself for the breakthrough. So here, Paul and Silas are in a midnight situation. What signifies midnight? Originally, midnight is 12 a.m. yesterday, today, or tomorrow. In our system, uh, tonight's midnight is the first moment of tomorrow. But for the rest of the world, there's no official answer. And the military use, uses a system in which midnight signifies zero hours. In that system, tonight's midnight is the first moment of tomorrow. Today, tonight's midnight will be the first moment of tomorrow. Your 
dark situation. Today is the first moment of the breakthrough for tomorrow. The new day, the new dawning, the new normal, the new experiences, the new endeavors, the new opportunities, the new alignments, the new doors, the new provision, the new understanding, the new revelation, the new identity, the new purpose, the unveiling of the wheel, plan, purpose, and design of God for your life. So midnight is a transition. Type in the comments, I'm in transition. And when you're in transition and um, in a midnight situation, it can look lonely because midnight is the darkest point of today and the earliest point of tomorrow. I may not be able to see as clear and my midnight than I can see at noonday when I'm experiencing the day. Uh, at midnight, people are generally sleeping. At midnight, people are generally in, in activity. There's not a whole lot of activity activity at midnight, but I can tell you that in your midnight situation, when you can't do anything, when you, your activity is limited, my God today, your activity has to cease in the midnight hour. When you take your hands off, that's when heaven's armies will begin to take up your case and begin to fight for you and begin to manifest the promise and the will of God concerning you. By clock time, midnight is the opposite of noon, differing from it by 12 hours. Come on. Dark night is the time opposite to solar noon, when the sun is closest to the nadir and the night is equidescent from the dust and the dawn. In other words, when the darkest time of the night happens. When your night season manifests, that's when God is saying, I'm turning things around. I'm bringing you into this night season so that you can experience a new day. I'm bringing you into a season where you have to rely on me. You have to look to me. You have to depend on me. You have to exalt me. You have to magnify me and you have to hear everything that I'm saying that you make so God is not allowing you to walk through the shadow of the valley, walk through the valley of the shadow of death. He's not allowing you to walk through that night season to cause you harm. You cannot get to a new day except you experience the night season. And in the night season, when it's darkest, you have to live by faith. Type in the comments, I'm living by faith. The Bible says that the just shall live by faith faith and by every word that proceedeth, that cometh forth out of the mouth of God. So let me ask you this, every prophetic word, everything that God has spoken concerning you, are you rehearsing it? Are you meditating on it? Are you praying it through? Are you uh, listening to it? Are you allowing it to be the lamp unto your feet and the light unto your path? Are you hiding it in your heart that you you might not uh, miss the mark. The Bible says to sin against it, but we know that uh, sin is simply missing the mark. So we have to hide the plans of the Lord, the word of the Lord in our heart that we may not miss the mark. Uh, in your night season, if you're not careful, you you may end up stumbling. Have you ever gotten up in the middle of the night? And have you ever stubbed your toe? my God today, on the end of the bedpost or on something that was obstructing your way during the nighttime. Uh, oftentimes, when you wake up at night, you're in a state of disoriented uh, uh, perception. You're in a state of disoriented view, and you have to rely on what you previously understood about your surrounding. I have to rely on, I know my bed is here. 
I know the bathroom is around the corner. Now what uh, manifested after I went to bed during the night in my awake time, I may not be cognizant of. But as we trust in the Lord with all of our heart and lean not to our own understanding and in all our ways begin to acknowledge him, he will direct our path. So we must have revelation of who Jesus is. The Bible says this about revelatory knowledge. He's in Matthew 16, 17 through 19, and Jesus answered him. Jesus answered him, blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this unto you, but my father who is in heaven. And here the disciples are sitting with Jesus and Jesus asked them a question. Who do they say that I am? Who do they say I am? What's the revelation? What's the buzz about me? What is your understanding as it relates to my nature, as it relates to uh, why I'm here, as it relates to my mission? You got to have somebody around you. You have to have people around you that have the revelation of what God has placed in you and of who you are called to be in the earth. These people have to have a solid revelation of your call, your destiny, and your purpose. When you have a dream that God has placed on the inside of you, it's detrimental to have dream killers around you. It's detrimental to have people questioning who you are, questioning the call, questioning the purpose. And in this moment, Jesus's response to uh, uh, Peter is, uh, uh, listen, flesh and blood couldn't reveal that to you. I know that you guys may see me just as Jesus, because some people only saw him as Jesus of Nazareth. Can any Anything good come out of Nazareth? Uh, do you have those people around you saying, could anything come out of the ghetto? Can anything come from Annie's daughter? Can anything come from Joe's daughter? Can anything come from Joliet? Can anything good come from Chicago? Can anything good come from Texas? You have to begin to dismantle those people around you that can't get the revelation, that refuse to accept who God has called you to be. So this moment was pivotal. This moment was a game changer. So he tells them, and I tell you, Peter, and on this rock, when that revelation, listen, I'm talking about unprecedented praying power keys and your key is worship. In this hour that we're living in, we cannot afford to be distracted by the bars that may be in front of us, but we have to keep our focus centered on the breaker that's gone before us. The Bible says that he is the breaker and he's gone before you and he's opened up the way but you have to catch the revelation of who he is in order to step into the keys that he's offering you the key of worship the key of praise the key of service so the bible says that i give you the keys of the kingdom and whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. So here in this moment, Jesus offers Peter a promise. He says, because you understand who I am, whatever you decree and declare concerning the earth, heaven will bring it down and bind it to earth. Heaven will bring it down and establish it in the earth. Heaven will bring it down and plant it as a statue in the earth. Whatever you, he said, the revelation that you just got offered you a key. So a key of revelation came unto Peter and he unlocked a mystery that when I have a revelation of Jesus Christ, who he is, his mission on earth, who he is as it relates to me being a son of God, that I can uh, request the assistance of heaven and heaven will back me up. So he offers him at the assistance of heaven. I need heaven's assistance. Type in the comments if you're up against a battle, if you're believing God to overturn a verdict in the heavenly 
families, if you're believing God for provision, if you're believing God for healing, you've done on everything that you can do. And you know that it is a spiritual battle that you found yourself in. You've done and exhausted every avenue you've done and walked in obedience. You've walked in obedience and you've done everything, but the promise is still not manifesting. You have to hold to the revelation of who Jesus is. He is the one that goes before you and opens up the way. Type in the comments, my way is made. I don't care how it looks. I don't care what's come against you. I don't care how the situation looks like you're just not going to make it out of it. So this is what Paul and Silas did. They remembered their relationship. Type in the comments, I have a relationship. I have a relationship and because I have a relationship, I have a I have heavenly assistance. The Bible says that the angels of the Lord are encamped around those who love God and who fear God, who reverence God, who serve God, who worship God. So Paul and Silas remembered who they were and they said, this is not a place for us to get down and out. We still have work to do. So they shifted their perspective. Type in the comments. I need to shift. If you need to shift your perspective, you're going to have to use your key and force yourself to get a revelation of who Jesus is. Get a revelation of your relationship. Get a revelation of your sonship. Go into your power place and begin to receive unprecedented praying power and ask God to show himself strong. God, I need a revelation of who you are as it relates to my healing. God, I need a revelation of who you are as it relates to my children. What does your word say about saving children? Well, the Bible says that it is for your children and your children's children and as many as the Lord that God shall call. Lord, I know you called me, so I have to begin to war and Hand in the gap for my son and my daughter, for the victory, for my family, for the deliverance in my finances. So the uh, Paul and Silas began to sing. They began to shift their perspective. They began to see what God could do. Now listen, let's take note. How Paul and Silas got in prison was service. They were serving the Lord. They had cast the devil out of a girl. And here comes retaliation. Type in the comments, retaliation. Don't you think that the enemy is going to allow you to win a battle? Don't you think that the enemy is going to allow you to take hold of one promise and not block another one? Sometimes in the midst of warfare, you're going to experience battle after battle. You're going to experience little by little conquering the land. The Bible said about the children of Israel that God left some of the enemies in the land of promise to teach the children of Israel the art of war. God is teaching you. God is training you. God is strengthening you. He says, I was uh, 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 teach your hands to fight and your fingers to war. You have to learn how to be victorious in battle. You have to learn who he is as it relates to you. He is my defender. How do you know that woman? Because he's defended me. He is my healer. How do you know that man? Because he's the God that healeth me. How do you know he is a comfort because he comforted me. Huh? In order for him to comfort you, you have to be in a state of not being comforted. So God is allowing your midnight to usher in your today. Type in the comments, it's a new day. Don't get it twisted. Don't allow the enemy to uh, 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 to uh, distort your perception. It is a new day. So here, Paul and Silas, they found themselves in a prison, but check this out. Let me take a drink on this one. Check this one out. 
Paul and Silas found themselves in a prison, but they were not in there alone. The Bible says that when they begin to shift, when they begin to see God, when they begin to magnify God, when the bars were no longer a force that they focused on and the breaker was the faith that they uh, 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 fought for, uh, uh, the people that were in the prison with Paul and Silas. You may have some people that need to hear your worship. You may have some people around you that need to understand who God is. There are some people that God wants to uh, uh, take along the journey with you. There are some people that are in prison just like you and they need to see your breakthrough. They need to see your rise. They need to see the chains fall off of you. So God placed Paul and Silas at the right prison. Listen, maybe Paul and Silas's deliverance and perspective was waiting on just the right jailer to come on shift because the Bible says that after Paul and Silas uh, 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 were set free and the, the prison guard he was going to kill himself because had they realized that everybody's chains were loose and everybody was being able to be set free, they would have killed this man. Uh, but he ends up receiving salvation. The man says to Paul and Silas, what must I do to be saved? Oh, God needs the right people around you to bring the breakthrough out of you. There is a breakthrough that God wants to put on display so that those around you can say, I know you didn't change your life just by going to school. I know you didn't change your life just by moving away. What happened to you? What changed you? What changed the way you were living? What changed your perspective? And you'll be able to minister salvation to those that are around you, those that are in prison just like you, those that were locked up just like you. Your breakthrough, your victory, the dawning of a new day is just ahead of you. The Bible says in Micah 2 and 13, the breaker is come up before them. They have they have broken up and have passed through the gate and are gone out by it. And their king, listen, their king, the king of kings, the Lord of lords, the Lord of heaven's armies, the Lord of hosts, the Lord God mighty in battle, the Lord God strong and mighty. The Lord is his name, his glory he shall not give to another. He is Jehovah Jireh. He is Elohim. He is El Shaddai. He is Jehovah. He is a rock in a weary land. He is the shelter in time of storm. The Bible says their king shall pass before them and the Lord on ahead of them. God has prepared the way out of your prison. Your prison doors are flinging open. Decree and declare it. My prison doors are open. Now, 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 I'm not a big uh, visitor of prisons and I didn't spend a whole lot of time with people that were incarcerated, but from what TV looks like and from my prior knowledge is that there are gates, right? There are gates. There are gates. And the Bible says that through the gate. The gates had to be broken down in Paul and Silas's situation. The gate signifies the locking out of or the keeping in. But here the Bible declares that the gates of hell cannot prevail against the church of the Lord. The gates of hell cannot prevail against the church. The Bible says upon this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Gates are designed to keep something out 
and to keep something in. What is the enemy trying to keep you out of? What prison has he tried to keep you locked in? The prison of your mind, the prison of hopelessness, the prison of anxiety, the prison of worry, the prison of stress, the prison of sickness, disease, diabetes, the prison of low self-esteem, the prison of poverty, the prison of I just can't do it, the prison of my life is not worth it, the prison of self-doubt, self-worry, low self-esteem, low self-concept, whatever prison you found yourself behind, whatever gate you found yourself locked up in, God is saying that those gates cannot Stand against the power of God that's coming after you. There is a song that his love chases you down, that his love comes after you, that his love abandons the 99 to go after the one. God knows how to get your attention. God knows how to bring you up out of a low place. God knows how to bring you out of a place of darkness and into the marvelous light. Listen, the darking, the darkness, the place of darkness, it is the place where you are transitioning. Look at it different. Shift your perspective. It got dark because God wanted to bring a new day. It got dark because God wanted to shine his light of glory in your life. It got dark because God manifested darkness. It got dark because God wanted to un uh, 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 veil your eyes to to what was around you. It got dark because darkness was around you and you just didn't see. It got dark because God wanted you to transition. It got dark because now I can see at it as it really is. I'm seeing and discerning my surroundings. I'm seeing and discerning my atmosphere. I'm seeing and discerning in the realm of the spirit. So it got dark so that a new day would arrive. How do I discern when midnight manifests in my life? When you have exhausted all of your strength and only God is your hope. That's how you discern when you're in a midnight, when you're transitioning, when a new day is dawning, when your perspective shifts, when you began to worship, when your worship or your service to God affects the lives of others. When things begin to loose their grip and darkness relents. That's how I know that I'm in a midnight. That's how I know that I'm getting ready to see a shift. You've been in the night season, but now you're coming forth into a brand new day. It's a new day, my friend. Begin to decree and declare and don't let go of the promises of God. The Bible says that the promises of God are yes and in him they are a man listen I just wanted to get on here and encourage you and to push you and to let you know that your midnight is your transition into a new day it is a new day God is with you God is for you be conscious of his presence of who he is get in the place of power use that key of praise and worship. Use that key of the revel revelation of who Jesus is and begin to rest on the premise that I am a son and that ensures my success. Listen, go ahead and share, comment, let me know how many runs are in this jar. It doesn't matter if you entered into the contest before, you can enter in again. How, uh, how many runs are in this jar? Share this Facebook Live. Go to my YouTube channel. If you've already subscribed, go ahead and share a video to your platform, one of the videos on YouTube. If you haven't subscribed, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. You have to let me know you did this in order to win the book. Last week we did... Um, well, last two weeks, we did Lunch on Me. But today, I'm sending a book, 
a book on me directly to your door. Listen, I'm going to get off here. I love you guys with the love of the Lord. And I love you with my love. Be blessed. Listen, book number two is coming. If you feel led to uh, be a kingdom financier, and if you feel led to support um, the ministry and what God has placed in me, you can sow a seed to Cash App number four, Purpose Coach. Cash App, dollar sign, number four, Purpose Coach. We are getting book number two out of there, out of here. Um, and we're sending it to the publisher. We have the contract. And if you feel led, if you um, are encouraged by the ministry and you want to partner with the ministry, go ahead and sow that seed to um, any of those avenues. Listen, sometimes God uses you just to push um, other ministries forward, and that's okay. Uh, but that's if the Lord is leading you. Sow that seed, paypal.me forward slash W-O-P-I-C, or you can um, uh, sow to Zell at sdowns2911 at gmail.com. Listen, I'm going to get off here. Be encouraged. Um, if you feel led to sow, go ahead and sow. If you want to enter into the contest, how many runs are in this jar, go ahead, share this Facebook Live. We're going to tell you again, share this Facebook Live. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. If you've already subscribed, share one of the videos. Tag me in it. Let me know that you did it. And guess the number of runs in this jar. We're giving you to noon Thursday. Noon Thursday to do all of those things. Listen, I'm going to get off here. I love you guys with the love of the Lord. Be encouraged. Be inspired. And be blessed.